Welcome to another advanced clan match uh, brought to you by Winshear here guys. This is my clan One World Order. This is our second official match, uh, advanced clan match against um, this clan now. It's called Fox FOX. They are a British team and um, have pleased to say we did good again. 2-0. Um, we're officially undefeated still and uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm showing you the second match first. The, the game plan was to play the best of three matches uh, between uh, Grand Bazaar, Sane Crossing, and Kaharg Island. Uh, we didn't get to Kaharg Island because we won the first two matches straight. Um, I'm showing you the second match first here because I think it's a little more interesting than Grand Bazaar was and you've seen that before uh, in my previous uh, video. Um, we, we didn't have a lot of high expectations on this match. Uh, we were down two of our good players, Need for Speed guy and MH. Uh, they both had uh, things going on they couldn't attend. So we had a couple new guys here uh, in the in the clan uh, filling in for them, and uh, uh, we are also going to be bringing a couple more people on board to the, uh, the advanced team for what it looks like. But um, still, basic overall strategy here is just <laughs> we really don't have one to be honest with you. Uh, we're not one of those clans that go is goes in there and names every little rock and objective uh, on every match and map and has you know a, a big old detailed game plan and contingency plan this and that. You know, every match is different. Um, there's lots of things going on. It's a dynamic environment. And the bottom line is we're all good players. We know what we need to do. And we're all in communication again. Now, I did not record the squad communication, guys. I apologize for that. Um, the reason why is because it's, it really limits my volume whenever I'm playing the game. So it really limits my ability to communicate. I was really struggling last time um, with that. Even being in the MAV, uh, you saw in the, the previous client match video I had posted. Uh, you know, hearing my team communicate to me was difficult, and I didn't want to, to basically redo that. Uh, we may, in the future, do some kind of Skype communication, uh, although that may be a little more difficult than, uh, it's easier said than done. But uh, I might record that uh, if we get to that level. But for the moment, I just want to kind of uh, narrate this match as we go. And you saw right off the bat, our first objective was to take position Charlie. Uh, my Alpha squad is, and, and then we secured that. And, you know, we basically take Alpha when we see it, an opportunity to do so. Um, but if we see the enemy is all encamped on it, well, we're not going to, you know, come barreling down there because it's a difficult position to take because there's a lot of windows and corridors. Right here you can see their tank pushing up here behind us, so I'm, I'm communicating them to everybody that's engineered to get ready for that. But fortunately, one of our teammates there just took that out with C4. I, I, I can't see who that is here in my feet. Was that Yo-Yo Mason? But n nice job nonetheless. That made it real easy. Yeah, the tank's always the main concern, and, and this clip is probably the highlight of the whole day. Check this out, guys. Come down here at Alpha, and uh, let's just say I just destroy the whole team here, I think. Enough said. One, two, three, four. Was that five guys I just took out right there? You gotta love that 93R, too. I mean, I'm just, you know, I don't, I'm trying to wean myself off of it, but I'm just tired of everybody using it, so I have to use it myself. But let's see that again in slow motion. Coming down here, and I... You know, for life of me, what did they think happened? I mean, I just killed this guy. I mean, they're all kind of like, whoa, no. I don't know why he just dropped dead in front of me. Let me try to resurrect him here. Um, yeah. I mean, I know as Assault, we're all guilty of that. We're just doing our best to try to get a guy alive. But you need to, I mean, these are experienced clan members I'm playing against. I mean, we're all guilty of it. But, uh, I mean, just devastating right there. When something like that, when one player takes out five of you at once, I mean, that just shuts down morale and just sets the tone for the rest of the match. So... I was pleased with that. I was pleased with the performance of that M4A1. But now I switch to Assault now that I realize that really their tank's no, no threat at all. So now I'm going to switch to Assault and try to just be a little more effective as a player resurrecting my teammates and uh, you know having a little better gun. And I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry to say I, I had this incredible match today with the M4-16 uh, here. And it was just unbelievable. And uh, you know it's, it's, it always seems it never fails. Anytime I'm not recording um, gameplay... That's when I have those just, you know, one in a million kind of match. Uh, and that's what I had today, unfortunately. But fortunately, I couldn't record it. But anyway, using this gun, it is an incredible gun. I'll probably have to post up a review of it. I'm trying to recall if I ever did or not. But um, I'll be putting some more footage up of this here at some point in time. But, uh, you know, I'd run the G3. I'm really comfortable with that. But in clan matches, you know, like the, the rest of us uh, competitive players and YouTubers, you know, we st typically stick with mainstream guns that you know are going to be really, you know, high fire rate kind of guns, high damage, and high accuracy. So, you know, the M16A3, M4, AUG, uh, the 
AEK, F2000, those are types of guns you're see in clan matches and assault. I mean, you just, you can't argue that those are the best guns uh, in the game, and that's why everybody uses them, because they're overpowered. But um, I like the M4 because it's, it's a lot like the M27. I think what the, the M27 used to feel like, it, it obviously it looks the same. Uh, but the M27 I'm pretty much staying away from, and you'll see that in Grand Bazaar, how I switched to uh, different uh, support class guns. Here you can see we got two out of, uh, you know, it's tied two to two. I'm just not going to go barreling down there. Hey, I know they're going to be coming up here. And I noticed that guy that was flanking, so, you know, and I know guys will spawn on him. So, you know, right off the bat, I'm just trying to meet them and delay them as much as I can. I'm communicating to my team that they are flanking us from behind. Now, pay attention to your respawn here at this point in time and you're, when you're in situations like this. I know, look, I got three guys right there. You know, spot on my remote deployment and come up behind them. And, you know, that was my plan. Unfortunately, I just didn't execute it that well. But, uh, I, you know, I spawned here and, um, you know, I would come up behind them. I thought I'd take most of them out, but unfortunately, I just, I don't know. I think I choked a little bit there on the pressure. And some guy somewhere else in the map got me with an F2000. But, unfortunately, you can't see the kill cam because this clan had very specific rules, which I kind of chuckled about in the beginning. I mean, they were going and saying... They don't want to see M320s, they don't want to see claymores, they don't want to see shotguns, and and um, they're also saying they don't want to see smoke, they don't want to see respawn beacons. I'm like, well, wait a minute, guys, you got to at least have those two things or else you can't, we can't have a recon class. You would just want to ban that too. So it's kind of chuckling about that, but we did honor the rest of the uh, stipulations about the M320s and shotguns and all that stuff. But yeah, going right into the match, I, I mean... I mean, like I said, we didn't have high hopes, but when a clan has that many little caveats, I'll say, or rules or whatever, if they're that picky, uh, it was my opinion going in that they're not going to be that good. Because, you know, most of the time a good clan isn't going to be bitching about anything. I just feel like, whatever, you know, bring whatever you got, let's go, let's see what you got. Um, that kind of mentality. Whenever you say, you know, I don't want this, I don't want that, you know, this is, a, you know, when you start bickering about that, uh, you know, I didn't argue with them except the respawn and the smoke, but I was just kind of chuckling myself thinking, yeah, these guys aren't going to be any good. And I didn't review their stats or anything like that uh, for the most part. It was, uh, I think, a clan that uh, Need for Speed pretty much set up. But you can see here in the score, pretty much shut down here. And again, this is the second match of the day. Uh, we go on to pretty much just to destroy them here, uh, ticket-wise. But you see there how I uh, begin situational wear, and, and I was, of course, just communicating to Fatboy there about his target off the right. Right here, I see a guy up in that window, and uh, I'm trying to spot I spot him before I start shooting, as you can see there, because one, it helps me acquire that target visually, and two, it instantly gets all my teammates on him. Unfortunately, I just pulled off the kill here. But, you know, when they only have one position, it's a surefire. They're all going to be down here in position Bravo. So now we're communicating. Let's try to get some uh, smalls up there, try to get some rubble kills, um, and that's what they're doing right there. We're dropping all that rubble down there and, and trying to get some rubble kills. I think somebody got some right, right, right there. Coming up here around, and this team's pretty good. They know we're coming up here, so they're throwing a grenade up here, and you're like, that just stops you down your tracks. You can't do much about it. But, you know, the, the, the main problem with Sand Crossing is a tank. And the, they failed to utilize their tank at all, effectively. Um, if you don't have a good tank crew, it's game over for you in this one. So we're just wrapping up here. This is the last little clip I got. I just saw the whole team rushing from Charlie to Delta, and they're just a little last, you know, desperate throw to do anything they can in the game. And we just swarm on them like... A group of uh, angry bees here and uh, you know this little guy starts camping on the staircase here and manages to pull off a couple kills but I I take care of these two guys here at the end so good match here uh, the next one's gonna be Grand Bazaar and I was kind of chuckling right off the bat because you're gonna see a tactic uh, employed by the team that I, I would probably uh, discern from what the, my observation that they probably reviewed my video that I posted on my channel about the first clan match I had with Grand Bazaar and uh, using the Mav as a surveillance type tactic. Nice flag defender medal there, huh? I'll take the 10,000 points. Um, I, you know, I think they they like that idea and they I have to say they copied that because I've never seen anybody else really... Uh, utilizing that tactic, but I did not use that tactic on this on this next match myself like I did in the previous video We're just running strictly the Mav and communicating the team because uh, I wanted to be down there this time with uh, with the gun battle Here's you can see the results of the team and everything uh, Not decent not a bad match decent little match, but this one's not quite as good in terms of my specific uh, uh, Gameplay uh, right off the bat we rush alpha 
And you can see here I'm running the L86 now. That is my weapon of choice as a support class. Um, I just cannot use my M27. Even though I got 3,000 kills with it, I, 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 the recoil on it is just unbelievable anymore. The only way I can really manage the M27 is to put a flash suppressor on it, and then it just kind of makes it weaker. And right here, I, I was just trying to get some C4 on that guy, and man, he just... I'll be damned if he didn't turn that turret right in my face. So this was the very first match we played in the very first, uh, you know, game. I was kind of starting to get a little bit apprehensive because I was thinking, oh boy, you know. Here we are right off the bat. They got, you know, two out of three positions. We're struggling to get one position. That BMP just ate our lunch. Um, and me being an alpha squad, we're just trying to stick to, to alpha position. Bravo squad, which is G-Money's uh, squad right now, he's running the LAV and, and handling the vehicle sake. And then Charlie's squad is being run by uh, Run Into My Knife, and his objective is pretty much to hold position Charlie. So our overall strategy, again, like in previous videos, it says to hold two out of three, preferably Alpha and Charlie. That way you can kind of sandwich them and keep them trapped in Bravo. Um, bottom line is you only want to hold two out of three positions. And, you know, pushing up here is a very difficult position, uh, especially when people throw so many grenades in these tunnels. Uh, you really got to have squad flak on. I'm trying to see if we have that equipped. Uh, I think we do. Uh, it's still a very difficult position to, to retain. But you see here, I finally pushed up here. And we can get everybody up here, basically secure this position, turn the tide back. Uh, but you desperately need bipods up here in these in these alleyways, which you'll see me change my uh, loadout later on in the match to accommodate that with the M60 again. Here again, push up here, wipe out these guys. And now we secure the position and finally start making things go our way. Then right here, you see me get one shot by an M16. But of course, I only have 10% health, so anything, any bullet anywhere on me will pretty much take me out. But here they're taking position alpha now. I'm spot on on map. We're communicating, trying to go around here and take these guys out. I mean, look how aggressive this team is. They know we're coming. They're good. They're a good team. I mean, they're they're coming right at me. And I thought I was going to get behind him over here. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking another clip. I do get behind him here. We go back here, secure this position. Now they moved up. And uh, kind of a, another little turning point in the match. Not exactly sure where their team is right now. But we're all in communication again with the squad leaders. Um, just the squad leaders are the ones on team chat. And the rest of us are, are just only on squad chat. You can see the L86 is just like an L85, but on steroids, an incredibly accurate gun for a support class. I think the most accurate support class weapon you can have as a kind of a, quote, light LMG. And I thought there was a guy behind that wall, so I was getting ready to put some C4 on it and blow through it, but um, teammates got around there in time. Now they're burning Bravo again. So again, here I would love to have a bipod. I don't know, you know, I prefer a grip on the L86, I really do. But a bipod would be real effective in these kind of situations, as you've seen in previous clips. And how the heck did that guy kill me with an ACWR from across the map there? That seemed kind of unusual. So here I have uh, switched to the M60. Uh, I have spawn on position Charlie. We're moving up here. Got to have a bipod on this gun again. This overall strategy is to put this thing up anywhere I can. When we hold two out of three positions, face it the other way, and get ready for the team to run through the alleyway. And again, this team has seen, I think they've seen my our videos. So they know when we get predicaments like this, or when we got our bipods up, they know what they need to do. They need to start flanking. And so, I, again, this team was very good. I mean, they put up a really good fight at the end. Really good job about flanking. Um, they're not going to stick around here and try to rush through these hallways because they know they can't get through. So... A uh, fat boy mover in our squad was having some tugs up so we can kind of identify them uh, flanking us if that was a, a threat because obviously that's your biggest threat in position Bravo is them, you know, flanking behind you and uh, putting you in putting you in the world of pain from behind. Now what they eventually do here is they bring up their BMP to this hallway which is a great tactic because, you know, what I, I got a bipod but then it could do much against a BMP so... But that's about the best strategy you could u utilize in a moment like that. Maybe uh, another option would be a mortar strike, but we all know how ineffective mortars are nowadays. I can hear that uh, BMP approaching, but I'm not really aware that it's coming until it's too late. 
But again, I'm just I'm trying to be patient. I know I'm I'm kind of wondering where they are at this point in time. So I'm trying to communicate with teammates, find out why am I not seeing guys that that's not good. If I don't see guys coming down these two hallways and they're not trying to take position Bravo, that means they're going somewhere else. So we're all trying to identify where they're at right now. Again, that's where the map comes in effect, uh, very effect. I can't talk, sorry. That's where the map is very effective at those kind of junctures where you can identify where the mass of team, you know, where the enemy teams are going. They pick up a few stragglers down here with, now I think some smoke has popped down here and that's when their BMP pushes up here in a moment. So you can see their Mav, they're fl flying down that hallway just like I was, you know, before in previous uh, that previous match. So, again, I was kind of chuckling myself about that. So here it is on the mini-map. I can't see it, but I see on the mini-map. I was like, oh, great. You know, that's that, not much you can do in that situation. Look at that. You got a level 100 kernel and a BMP. That's just great. So I spawned back on Alpha because I believe they were taking that. And, uh, and that... Of course, once they had that BMP in position, Charlie, they pushed up and took Bravo real quick. Now look at this little tactic this guy has. I wiped out those two guys. I know there's going to be guys around here. And look at this. He already had C4 waiting for me. I mean, that's that's a good team we're playing right there. Uh, but that was the end of the clip. End of the match, pretty much. Uh, there's just a few clips after that, but I cut most of that out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe. It helped you out. Um, we are still taking uh, applicants as they come, but you got to be a really good player. Uh, this is Winch here again. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll have more to come.